Arcade games by nature are pretty shallow experiences. They're meant to suck quarters and be addictive, which is a bad combination for some. But in general, they're a bit of a lost art. Here in the States, arcades don't really exist anymore, and with home consoles being as affordable and as powerful as they are, it's not really a surprise that most people want to stay home to play their video games. But for anyone who missed the arcade era entirely, it's totally possible you might not understand the beauty and the simplicity of these games. Every quarter gives the player another chance to get just a little bit farther, and hopefully, a little bit better. Arcade games were always a visual tour de force, moving big sprites around the screen, offering sometimes up to four-player co-op, or using polygonal graphics long before they were the norm on home consoles. Not that this ever stopped a publisher from trying to make money on a home console port. Now, bringing an arcade game to a home console can be disastrous if not done right. See, arcade games tend to be short, and by the 32-bit era, most console gamers were used to a more robust experience. So the trick is finding a way to make short, simplistic experiences a lot deeper. Tekken 3 on PlayStation 1 was famous for adding two new characters, uh, Gon and Dr. Bosconovich, plus a force mode, uh, which was a brand new side-scrolling beat-em-up mode, plus ball mode, which was sort of like Tekken Volleyball. Um, basically, it just added a ton of extra stuff to do. Crazy Taxi, when it came out, wowed the world with arcade-quality graphics on the then-new Dreamcast, but that wasn't good enough for Sega. They also included a whole brand new city, essentially doubling the size of the arcade original. Then there are games like Time Crisis 2 and 3 that reward you for multiple playthroughs with different, stronger weapons the more you play. So even though each playthrough was less than, say, two hours, you could ostensibly play the loop many times over. The home port of Die Hard Arcade on the Sega Saturn it takes 25 minutes to beat, and when you're done, you can play this. To be fair, this was a pretty good port of the arcade game. The graphics are similar, and although they've aged like total garbage, they were fairly impressive at the time. Uh, there's a two-player mode, and there's this. There's a ton of weapons here, too. Everything from handguns to missile launchers, uh, plus staples from older brawlers like uh, pipes and broken bottles. And if you feel like learning them, there's quite a few moves you can execute, too. The cutscenes are really rough, and the voice acting is horrible. But what I do like are the quick-time events that pop up between levels. Success will give you a leg up in the next fight, or might let you skip a fight altogether. Sadly though, when a game clocks in at only 25 minutes and it feels repetitive after only half of that, it's not good news. The real shame is that Sega could have made a Streets of Rage 4 or Altered Beast 2, or a new Golden Axe if they wanted to make a brawler. And if it was 2D, like Guardian Heroes, it could have been absolutely beautiful. So, 
what is the point of this? Well, it's an old Sega arcade game from 1979 called Deep Skin. If you play it enough, it'll earn you credits for Die Hard Arcade proper. Not that you'll need very many. But it is also a nice diversion. When I was capturing footage, I realized I'd much rather be playing this than Die Hard Arcade. And it's surprisingly addictive. Come on, come on. Yes!